Hi, thank you for joining me. I'm Monty McKinnon. Today on this video, we're going to talk about four mistakes that people make when applying a French polish finish to their guitar. We'll get to that in just a moment, but first, let's spin that intro. We are back. Now, let's talk about the first mistake that people make, and it's a biggie. Now, a lot of us like to play an acoustic guitar by finger picking, which means we have our fingernails on this hand longer than this hand, and we're doing all of this kind of good stuff. The problem is when you come down and you're building guitars and you're a player, you don't think about that, and you take your, your cloth and you're going across the top like this, and you draw your nails across the top and you scratch it terribly. You'll put all kinds of indentations in it. You can do it on the side and that can present a real problem for you because that means you may have to take all the finish off to sand it down again or at the very best maybe put some pour fill into the marks that you've made on the top of the guitar and then re refinish it. It's a nightmare cut your fingernails, file them down, sand them down, make them smooth. Now, the next thing I like to do is I use these nitro gloves, and this is just a little extra precaution for me. What I do is I, I'll put one on both hands so that no matter where it is, this thing is always going to have a little bit of extra protection for me when I'm doing the French polish, and we're going to do some of that in just a minute. Now, the second mistake that people make is not using Starbond thin or medium glue, CA glue, in order to fix any kind of little, little uh, tiny pieces you think I could do this glove a little better? Anyway, there we go. Along the binding, we want to make sure all of this is filled with the glue and then sanded because that will make it perfectly smooth. And I have already done that to both sides of this guitar. So we're ready to go for our prep. And that brings us to a third point. Don't make this mistake. You've got to prepare this thing properly. I like to start with a 220 sandpaper and I go over it very carefully. I will then follow that perhaps with a 400 grit sandpaper and I will go over that gently and I will wipe all the sawdust off. I may even go to a 6 or an 800 paper or even a 1000 to make sure that this thing is as smooth as I can possibly get it. The reason for that is if you don't or you've taken sandpaper and you've gone across the grain, then you're going to have scratch marks and when it gets under the finish, the finish magnifies it and you see those scratches. So it's important that you go with the grain and you start at a low number to take out any imperfections, any bumps and whatnot to level it all. And then you get into the 400 and maybe a 6 or an 8 or even a 1000 grit paper, whatever that would would do for you. You, sh you should really think about that. So the next thing that people do, if they have any French polish, they go back and use the same old French polish they've had for quite a while. This happens to be new and fresh. And I make my own French polish by using Everclear alcohol and shellac flakes, and I put in the eight ounces of uh, alcohol into a jar and one ounce of shellac flakes, I break them up so that they'll, they'll dissolve all that much faster. And then it takes quite a while and I keep moving the jar around like my hand and I shake it back and forth and I'm, I'm doing all of this kind of thing in order to make that solution. Use a fresh supply of polish. Now, I have already done one side here and I wanna show you the difference. Here's the side I have not done. I have sanded this. Look how nice and white that is, nice and clear, okay? Now, I've put one coat, basically, on the other side. Take a look at this. 
already with even one set of polish on there, it's beginning to look pretty good. It's, it's got a bit of a sheen. I'm going to do probably about 15 coats of finish on here before I'm done. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to do some, and I'll show you how you do it. Now, this is my cloth, and this is my cheesecloth in here. Note, I put this back in there, and I keep it sealed so that the moisture will stay in there. Now, the way I deal with this, this cheesecloth is pretty good stuff. It's a high density, as thick as I could find it, cheesecloth. You don't want thin stuff. I fold it over into thirds. I fold it again into thirds and again until I get a small little pad like this. Now, what I do, and by the way, here's a bonus mistake that people make. They leave this too close to the work. I like to have it up against here so that it sometimes could get knocked over. And believe me, you don't want to knock that over because this stuff is too precious. All right, I've got a little bit of French polish on there. I just simply do this. Nice and gentle. And you know what? We're going to do this, putting this on here about, I don't know how many coats I'll do. It, it, I'm going to do as many coats as it takes. You'll be surprised at how far this shellac will go. I really like the French polish. The beauty of the French polish is it's thin but it's very easy to repair, really easy. So if the guitar gets banged up somewhere, it's not a problem trying to put a, a, a little more polish on and clean it up and repair it. It's very easy to do. Now, there will come a time shortly where I will do this and then I will just start to swirl it a little bit and ever so lightly but I, I, that's what gives it the polish. That, that's what gives it its shine. That's where it, it ends up going into the pores and, and moves it around and fills the pores with the French polish. And, and honestly, it's, it's, you can already see that. That's, wow. Let's, let's just put that away and see how we made out. Now, remember, that side was white. This was the side that we already did, right? We already have a coat on that. This is what we've done now with just adding a little bit more. Look at that. Now this top has several coats on. This is just a protective coat. This is dry already, by the way. It's, it, it dries so quickly because of the alcohol. And we haven't anything on the back here. And I'll do some of that in the next video and show you how we do that. All right, so, and that's it for this video. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm really pleased that you were here. I hope you hung in for the whole duration because this is really important. Don't forget, the most important part is making sure these nails are cut short or, or filed short because when they go across there later on, you'll see when I apply the polish, it will absolutely make you cry. It'll ruin your day, especially when you've put all kinds of time and hours and hours in finishing this and getting it to a high gloss, and then you go across it. Oh, the same thing with your guitar pick. You know, when your guitar pick comes down on it and it runs across it, it's the same thing as your fingernails. So you gotta be careful with that. All right, that's it for me today. So thank you very much. I'm going upstairs, have a cup of tea. I hope you will think about that. I'm having English breakfast tea because it is really good tea and I love it. So I'm gonna get my tea and hopefully you can join me in the next video. So we'll see you then. Bye for now.